I'm and co-host Tyler Uremchuk was sitting next to me for game seven last night of the Stanley Cup final. Uh, Tyler being a noted Oilers fan and host of Oilers Nation every day. Uh, definitely had some nerves and there was a ton of nervous energy in the building in game seven, particularly in the third period. Tyler, what is your overarching thought? Obviously a strong run and tons of resilience from the Edmonton Oilers, but the fact that they fall short and the fact that we have a game seven in which Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl are held off the score sheet. How do you wrestle with that? Yeah, I mean, I remember back to what you said ahead of Game 6, Frank, where you're like, hey, if this team gets one big game from Leon Dreisaitl, they are going to win the Stanley Cup. And now you look and it's like, yeah, if they would have gotten one big game from Leon Dreisaitl, they would have won the Stanley Cup. And, you know, it's disappointing to see the two stars kind of go out with a whimper like they did, not for lack of effort. It was for a lack of bounces, I would say, and also a credit to Sergei Bobrovsky. But it really is kind of a sick, twisted way for it to all end for the Oilers. In years past, it was always... No depth scoring, no goaltending, the blue line stunk, every other excuse or reason in the book. And this time it was the depth that was fine. It was the goaltending that was fine. It was even the blue line that I thought was largely okay in game six and seven, but it was the stars who didn't come through. It's it's a weird twist. Well, looking uh, at the way that this did go, you're talking about the depth. You're talking about guys that step up. Was there a player on Edmonton's roster that changed your opinion of them moving forward? A guy that you were ready to send packing and now you're feeling like this is a guy who we can keep with Connor and Leon and look to the future of trying to capture that Stanley Cup. Uh, yeah, a couple of names come to mind. First off, I think Connor Brown and Matthias Janmark are, are two guys that they need to really strongly consider bringing back in the bottom six. They were both big parts of the Oilers' penalty kill. They're pending UFAs. They shouldn't be that expensive. Um, you know, the word is always that Connor was someone last summer who went to the team and said, hey, I, I want Matthias Janmark back. He's really loved in the room. And Connor Brown, I mean, I think the bonus maybe stings a little bit less next year at that $3.5 million if Maybe you bring him back on a cheap contract and at least you still have the player. And the other name, and he's on the board as an RFA, it's Philip Broberg. I mean, this is a guy who barely played in the regular season. This is a guy who was down in Bakersfield, got called up to start the playoffs, didn't play at all until the tail end of the Dallas series. And after seeing what I saw from him in the last 10 games here in the playoffs, he's a top four defenseman in this league. And for that to happen in such a short span and for the Oilers to now have that in their minds as they have to make some decisions here over the next week about their roster... Broberg is here and he's ready to handle big minutes to take a big step forward next year. Tyler, I'm sure there's some part of you and a lot of the Oilers fan base that feels like this is a missed opportunity getting to game seven, clawing your way all the way back and not getting the job done. But I mentioned earlier in the show that Connor McDavid in, in losing fashion, he's the sixth guy to win the con Smythe. J.S. Jaguar, it took him a few more years with the Anaheim Ducks. He gets the job done in, this, in the Stanley Cup final and hoists that cup. Does this playoff run leave you more convinced than ever that this is something that's inevitable for this team and this player? Or does this feel like, hey, we not get back here? Yeah, it, it's really, really tough right now because you want to sit there and say, yeah, a team with Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid can always get back there. And I think that's true. But at the same time, a lot of stuff went their way this year. I mean, you know, their path to the final wasn't, you know, they didn't really have to face, I feel like, a true juggernaut until round three against Dallas. Vancouver was banged up. No Demko. That still went seven. And the other thing is the Oilers, for the most part, stayed remarkably healthy, not just in the playoffs, but kind of all season as well. I know McDavid was battling things and Dreisaitl was battling things at the end, and they obviously lost to Vander Kane, but it's not like they dealt with a significant injury to any of their key players that would have caused them to miss three months or even you know three to four weeks during the regular season so so many things went right that you kind of sit there and go man it, it's a reminder of how many things have to break your way to go on a run like the Oilers did but I still think at the end of it I come up more on the side of Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl they can will this team to another run like this they can get it done and they've now lost in every round of the Stanley Cup playoffs together during their time uh, or during this era here with the Oilers they'll be back and you know maybe it's just one of those situations where you had to learn one more tough lesson if you're the oilers yeah i tend to agree with you i had a current nhl player just text me right now while i'm doing the show his text says hard to believe mcdavid hasn't won a cup yet and i was talking to sam reinhardt on the ice after the game last night and i said what's your overarching emotion what do you feel i said is it relief that you guys pulled this off after blowing that three nothing lead and he said 
it's actually relief that we held off the best player in the world in game seven, which says something. So, uh, Tyler, thanks for you hopping on today. Safe travels and, uh, looking forward to hanging with you in Vegas. Uh, great work all playoffs long on Oilers nation. What's up hockey fans. If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at daily face off exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli fantasy updates from Brock Sagan and a daily live show at noon Eastern Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content. So hit that subscribe button.